All right, first question comes from Katie in Dallas. Asks, 12 teams have won a national title since the turn of the century. Can you give me a couple teams who have not won in that time frame that have a good chance to win a natty within the next five years? I love it. It's a great question. And it actually was one that kind of had you thinking. You think about the turn of the century, man, it feels like forever ago. So you're thinking, well, Miami would be the, off the top of my list. Well, they won in 01. You know, o- Oklahoma, they would be up there. Well, they won in they won in, in 2000. So there have been teams that have won championships, but you know, maybe they feel really far removed from having won a championship or being competitive for a championship. I pulled together six that kind of stand alone to me as the ones that are closest. Now, I do think that there's a strong possibility of a resurgence that you could see from a Virginia Tech where you know maybe they haven't been as good lately, but they catch fire, you get the right quarterback, and next thing you know, you're cooking with gas. A TCU, of course, very close last year, very close in 2014, but ultimately last year kind of showed me that the gap is fairly significant, not, not to the extent in which they would lose by 60, but winning a national championship and getting to a national championship or getting to the playoff to me feels even more difficult than ever before. The other thing I'd say too, in a 12 team format, which is where we're going to get to, it might be even more difficult for the teams that aren't quote blue bloods to win the title. You got to have great players. You got to have great depth and you got to be able to stockpile talent to play in a 16 game regular season. That includes a championship game on the back end. So, Here's the list that I put together. Penn State, in no particular order, we'll start with them. Penn State would be a team that has been close before and has at many points in James Franklin's tenure have gone toe-to-toe with Ohio State. Now, I know that they haven't always necessarily won the games, but they have been competitive and compared to the rest of the Big Ten East, not named Michigan the last couple of years, They've played them closer than pretty much anybody. So Penn State has gone toe-to-toe against top-tier competition before. They've won Rose Bowls. They've played really, really high-level football at times. They would be a team that I think could go over the hump very soon if they get the quarterback position situated. Let's go to Washington. Let's Part of you might say, well, hang on, Pac-12, really? Do you, do you honestly believe that? Well... Here's why I think the Pac-12 actually might be well positioned to cut down the nets, if you will, down the road because they're going to have an automatic admission into the college football playoff every year by way of winning their conference. So you're going to notice a couple teams on here. I believe that not just Washington can win one, but I think Oregon is well positioned to potentially win one as well. In the NIL era, Obviously, Nike, very deep pockets, very well-supported program. But with the Pac-12, quote, weakening, those teams are going to get admission on a fairly annual basis, along with Utah and others, to potentially get over the hump. And I, I believe, I really believe this, that both Oregon and Washington, if you've been there, like Oregon was in 11, like Washington's been in the 90s, if you've been there at one point or another, I believe that you can get back there. So I really believe that both those teams are capable of potentially winning a national championship. Another one would be Notre Dame. And a lot of people would say, well, man, they've made the playoff. And look how big the gap has been when Notre Dame's played against top-tier competition. Sure, I don't disagree with that. Brian Kelly did a remarkable job of getting a team that played consistent football on a year-in year out basis. Yes, there was the black guy that was what 2016 where it was a hideous season. But for the most part, man, this team is steady Eddie. But now with Marcus Freeman, it does feel like on the recruiting trail, there's a little bit more upside. Does feel like with Marcus Freeman, the relationship aspect of the recruiting game is something that he excels at. Now, there were growing pains in his first year, but there were times last year where they were playing high level football. Now, Marshall notwithstanding, Stanford notwithstanding, there were some ugly performances. No denying that, but this was also a team that took Clemson to the woodshed. It's a team that took North Carolina to the woodshed. They're a legit squad, but consistency has been part of the issue. And to be honest with you, quarterback play, Ian Book was good. I think Sam Harton's got a chance to at least 
match, maybe even in some ways exceed what Ian Book has. But I believe with how Marcus Freeman recruits, Notre Dame could potentially win one at some point down the road. And two, that should really need no explanation. I think it's fairly obvious how I feel about these two programs. Michigan, do I need to spend more than five seconds talking about Michigan? Probably not. I mean, this is a team that has been close before. If they had beaten TCU in the semifinal game last year, I really believe they would have given Georgia a far more competitive game. Would they have ultimately won the game? I don't, I don't know about that. But I think this is a year for Michigan where they really could make a legit run. All the quarterbacks in the top 10, top five, all those guys that are top flight leaders of their programs last year, the only one that's not really replacing anybody is Michigan. J.J. McCarthy's back and should be better than ever with a really nice supporting cast offensively. And you know the defense is always going to be good, especially with the new twitch they have on the edges of that defense. And then the next team would be Tennessee. Tennessee, look, you got to continue to do it, right? You got to continue to play against Alabama, to play better against Georgia. And they are still feels, at least right now, like there's a pretty decent sized gap between Georgia and Tennessee based on last year's performance. But when you take everything into account and you look at how Tennessee has recruited in the past, how Tennessee is going to continue to recruit, their commitment to NIL, where they're at right now as far as a fan support and fan morale standpoint, it does feel like Tennessee is on an upward trajectory. I am really optimistic about it. Now, ultimately, can Josh Heupel win a national championship? It's a little bit to be determined, but given the growth they've made in very short period of time, would anyone be surprised if they are consistently competitive at the top of the SEC? I don't think anybody would push back against that whatsoever. So those would be the six teams right now that would be at the top of my list as teams that could win a national championship that haven't done so since the 20, I guess the turn of the century, since 2000, if you will.